Blitz! <laughs> Blitz, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something real quick, bro. We, I was telling, I told Donnie, my producer, that we were having you on today. Donnie, jump on. Why are you yep. such a big? Why are you such a big fan of Blitz? Tell him to his face. I, I mean, <laughs> how you doing? It's, it's, it's an honor. Uh, the the burial of Kojo. I saw that on Netflix of Kojo. a little while ago, and it was amazing. So Man. yeah, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Let me tell you something. I saw it before you. <laughs> you did. You I did. saw I saw it before you. Let's talk to Blitz right now. Donnie hit the Hi, ding. How are you? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Hi. Blitz. Hi. You know, he gets so excited when his friends come on, doesn't even doesn't even do the right thing and introduce us. It's so nice to meet you. So happy to have you Such on the podcast. A pleasure. Such a pleasure. So I knew this man. He was going by Blitz the Ambassador. Okay. So I, this is my first question. I know that you. We talked. To, we we talked to you. First of all, the gentleman that you're that that we have on higher learning right now, and I say this with absolutely zero hyperbole. I've talked. I've talked to him before. He's going to be a central figure in defining the next couple of decades of film. I promise wow. you guys that that's true. I wow. promise you that it's true. High praise. High, I, but it's real praise. It's coming out. The director. <laughs> Of the burial of Kojo, the director of the color, the upcoming color purple musical. Indeed, indeed. I, I knew him when I interviewed him years ago as Blitz the Ambassador. What made you change how people are referring to you now? Well, it it well, Blitz the Ambassador, first of all, was was my music moniker. You're right. You know, it's, yeah. it's, you know, I, I did music for solid 10 years. And you know, for those of you who know, know, I mean, now we know Afro beats is a big thing, right? But, but you know, when, when I started mixing what Public Enemy was to me and what Fela Kuti was to me, people had no idea what it was. You know, it, it was like these two worlds that were just kind of coming together at a very interesting time. Like, I remember, like, distinctively the World Cup in 2010. That was like mm. a real defining moment. Like every time Ghana will win a game, like ESPN will play my song, I'll get a nice check. It was like, you know, <laughs> K9 had the World Cup anthem. You might remember Waving Flag, big record. So like there was this push. And, you know, my, you know, when I first got into this culture of, of rap, it was about really trying to explain and explore this vastness of blackness, man. And it's vast. And we know blackness is vast. And of course, um, um, my job, you know, I, I saw myself as an ambassador then, you know what I mean? And that was, that was really how I came in at, into the music business. But over time you find that, wait a second, you know, your, your last name matters, you know, your last name matters. And my name is a very distinctive name in Ghana. It's not like the popular, name that everybody knows. My family's from a very tiny village, northernmost part of Ghana. Have any of y'all ever been to Ghana? No, I have no. not. Okay, come on, that's that's a problem we are gonna have to fix. Gotta get out there. Yeah. Because, because you will love it, period. Besides, everybody's going there, so. It's right. like, there's no reason. It's the thing, everybody's going there, like this, yeah. this December, everybody's trying to get us to come to Ghana. We might have to you, make the trip. You, I will be there, so please find me. You know okay. what I mean? Yes, I will. I will be home. But uh, but, you know, I, again, for me, it, it, you know, my, my family's from a very tiny village in the Upper West. You know, my tribe is very small. And it's like that name is important. It's important that th those people see that and recognize that. And so I change it to my last name. So that's Blitz Bazawule. I kind of want to piggyback on that because the New York Times had a really great article profile on you. Hey. Um and some of the things that you talked about, because on this podcast, we've had conversations about my black is better than your black and how sometimes yeah. we're very divided in, you know, American, Canadian, sure. the islands, Africa, when we should all come together. And you said something that I'd love for you to talk more about. You said it's incalculable, sorry, it's incalculable how much the world loses every day by intentionally excluding Africa, whether it's in the creative endeavors or the sciences, which is sad because it's the world's loss, which is so true. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how you implement that feeling, that thought, that creativity into your work? 
Absolutely. I mean, the way I look at it, you know, let's do the math for a second. You know, the continent is about 1.3 billion people. And that's a significant chunk on this planet. And when we add the diaspora, I mean, we're pushing 2 billion. Sure. If there's only 7 billion people on this planet, then we're close to one third, you know what I mean? Give or take, right? Of this, of this world that we're in. And um, I find it really odd because imagine if one third of your body don't function, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like you can't operate. And that's how the world operates every day without even blinking. Nobody goes, I have never seen an African movie made by an African and it's fine. And like, you just keep going. Nobody stops to say it's odd. I don't know, you know, an African scientist and it's fine. We just keep going. And, it, and, it, and again, I, I just found it odd that if, if, a, if a world is connected, you know what I mean? And, and how we lean on each other and we all have something to offer. We all got our good traits, our bad traits. It's, it's odd to me that there's so little interest, but also let's not forget the continent birthed all of this anyway. So, so, so it's just how are we forgetting that such a critical part of our, you know, um, amalgam as human beings is being excluded. And I've never understood that. And, and shout out to, you know, African-American culture for holding it, you know, some sort of mantle, you know, for a very long time. And now you can see now we're all kind of participating in the discourse, but African-Americans started it. Like, without a doubt, in terms of this loud voice, at least in the last, you know, 30, 40, 50 years yeah. of just going, listen, culturally, we're here. Yeah. And it might be that, you know, the media monopoly exists here. And so you can stand on it and the whole world will hear you. But again, I remember as a kid being in Ghana, hearing Public Enemy for the first time and seeing them echo what we knew to be true and Public Enemy actually visiting Ghana. And, and then, I, you know, you know we, we talked about this before. Sure. That visit was so transformational, just for, not for me, but for several people who were looking for something to stand on. And, and hip hop culture was that thing. Yeah. Mm. Um, when you say Africans, African movies made by Africans, how important is that to you? Because there are movies that like, you know, that I saw when I was growing up that were that were took place on the continent. And I don't know if they were directed by Africans. I don't know if they're directed by black people. I don't know. But you know what I mean? I'm not sure how much Africa by Africans I've consumed in media besides what's really going on with, with WizKid and, 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 um, and Burn a Boy. Burn a Davido. And that Davido. So I'm not sure how much I've actually consumed. What, what does that look like? What is that? Where is that? So first, and we'll talk about film for a second. So African films have been Oscar nominated, I think about five, six of them for best foreign picture. Okay. Out of those, almost 100% of them have been made by non-Africans. Interesting. Right? And a few who have won are like Europeans who went to Africa to make movies. And again, I, I you know, I, I, I found it odd. I found it odd because there are no other people, you know, have their story told by others at such a rate. Now, again, if it was one for you, one for me, I, you know, look, I get hey, it. Yeah, I see. But, but when we're talking 90% of what you've consumed, you know, and that's why I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for this time because we're actually living in, uh, the reality that we've hoped for for a long time, that we will actually have a, have a, get to the means of production, create the work as we see it. And again, right or wrong, that's how I see it. And it'll be more truthful in terms of my take on it than someone who is voyeuristic. You know, someone who's just on the outside going, oh, this little cool, they'll pick and select. And I feel like we're finally getting to that place where if you look at Netflix picking up a lot of African films now, sure, yeah. you know, high quality films. A lot of the music that's being consumed globally is is Africans made by Africans on the continent exporting. And again, we grew up being bombarded by the world. You know what I mean? Right. And it's yeah. just now that we're like, OK, well, let's have a discourse and a dialogue. It's not going to be a monologue anymore where we're over there just accepting and receiving we're going to have something to say because that for me is how we grow as, 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 a, as a, you know, as a species. 
Right. Reality TV. I watch Young Famous and Af- I watch all reality TV shows. Do you watch Young Famous and Africa? I have not seen it, but I have heard <laughs> incredible things. So let's get right. out of their minds. But I love them. Again, again, it's look, we're myriad. There are a myriad of people, man. And it's such a vast continent. I've had the blessing to travel every corner of it, at least not every country, but every, you know, cardinal point. And you go, man, North Africa is its own thing. You go to Morocco, yeah. different kind of Africa. You go to South Africa, different kind. You go to Kenya, you go to Ghana. And it's like, it's. I love that now we're all going, all right, it's time for me to have some personality and bring something that is me. You worked on, black, not worked on, we're a director yes. for Black is King. Yes. And I remember, now this might give me some trouble, I wouldn't categorize myself as in the beehive, okay? But I have a mad respect. Dan, I've said it before. Be careful of what you say next. I have mad respect for, (laughs) no, I have mad respect for Beyonce. Like I listen to her music and everything. I'm just saying, I'm not like the first one to go run out and buy her concert tickets. But there was something about Black is King that moved me in a way that I wasn't expecting (sighs) when I watched it. And I know, and I, I, I know this, wasn't and, just me now, <laughs> but, but you were behind, it. but you were behind it and it's your vision. And I'm just working on that project. I felt like it didn't open my eyes, but I just felt so connected and so proud. That's the word. I yeah. felt so proud watching black is King. Was that well, when you, when you get the call to work on this, you're not sure. I, and maybe y'all did have conversation of what, what you wanted this to be. What was your goal? What was your hope? when someone who's not from Africa is watching this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, first, I mean, shout out to Beyonce, man, because Amazing. she was just, she was just a generous host, you know, just a, a beautiful person, a kind person and a, a genuine person. Her genuine goal was to mm-hmm. create something beautiful for her kids, my kid. You know what I mean? Folks who haven't seen Africa the way we know to be like when you touch down, you know what it is. And she has been, but she hadn't seen it immediate. And mm. her oldness to, for, I mean, name it black as king already was like, wow. But, but but ultimately she chose people who were proximate. You know what I mean? She chose people on the continent. She chose people who were from the continent to do the work. She had already collaborated with a ton of them. And she was like, yo, go do it. You know, and 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 she gave us autonomy. Like I literally would come into the office with her, we'll, we'll sketch out, you know, the, the, the storyboards, and she'll be like, all right, blitz, that's it. That's how you feel. Go do it. And and I went down to South Africa, put together an incredible team. And you know, the thing that people forget about Black is King is it's it's one of the first times that you've ever you've actually seen the continent shot beautifully. You know what I mean? It's it's a very mm-hmm. under, you know, you know, underappreciated fact, but it's a major fact because we're very socialized to see the continent out of like the National Geo, Nat Geo viewpoint. It's very rare that we've seen, first of all, urban Africa that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, and 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 and, and Beyonce was very particular about that. Was like, yo, we're gonna, we're not only also just gonna shoot it as it, we're gonna shoot it also as to how we hope it could be. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that gave us a lot of just inspiration to go out there, knowing how I grew up, knowing the communities I grew up in and knowing how I see them and I, knowing how beautiful they are innately and just making sure that my camera captured that. And really that was it. But, but I mean, the impact, it was literally two years ago, around the same time, literally um, we were in COVID times. It was wild. We were all going through high emotion and yeah. see something as beautiful. Yo, I cried, yo. The night it came out, I watched it alone, solo. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe we have achieved this. It, it was incredible. Yeah. Shout out to Jen and Kiru. Shout out to, you know, I mean, Ebra, EK, all, you know, all the amazing creatives that worked on this. Right, we got to talk about the color purple now. Oh, yeah. okay. yes. We got to talk about the color purple. <laughs> oh, we have to do this. So, um, I remember when I was a kid, one of the movies that we would get together and watch together as a family, which was really tough for the men, was uh, The Color Purple. Yeah. You know, my mother had a big issue with Danny Glover for a long time. 
<laughs> so did mine. Like, like, it, it was, it, it was like, it, it, it was like a long time. Wow. I remember *Lethal Weapon* two came on one time, and she was like, "I don't want to see that." <laughs> I'm like, it's a totally different, like a Devon. It's a totally different thing. This, as I understand it, uh, is not a retelling. Because I'm gonna be honest with you. At first, when I hear they're gonna do the color purple, I think. Don't do it. No. Leave it alone. Gotcha. Like, I, because because gotcha. because just to the the moment of time that it represents with all of those people. Absolutely. But and I even left a comment. I didn't even know Bliss was directing. I left a comment on the shade. Oh, no. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. What did you say? I left a comment on the shade room. I was like, man, just leave it alone. And <laughs> then. OG hit me up. OG was like, hey, you know your man Blitz is... I'm like, oh, shit! Go back, delete the comment. And now, you know, because I want to see... For people who might feel that way, for people who might feel this is a... this is a, The Color Purple is a classic movie with such classic scenes, amazing performances. Yeah. What's different about the Color Purple that you guys are bringing yeah. to the screen? And why don't you tell us who's all working on it with you? Absolutely. I mean, first, bro, like... That I couldn't be more blessed. Let me just say this. Coming off of Black is King, I couldn't be more blessed to have this opportunity to direct such a, because let's start first with Alice Walker's novel, because you sure. can't, that's the beginning, you know? Mm -hmm. That novel, like, is so deep. Like, I read it in college, freshman year, blew my mind because it was one of the first times I had read African-American literature that also had an, a window into Africa. Like, I, I didn't know that even existed. I was like, wow, here's this poor black woman living in rural South, who knows Africa, who knows her sister is in Africa, who is connecting with her sister on the continent. And I was like, that in of itself was, was, was radical to me. And so getting the opportunity to, to, to reimagine, and I have to call it a reimagination. It is not a retell, it's not a remake. It's okay. Complete reimagination, and where that starts from first is the book. It's like I, you know, we start first with what was left out because it is such mm. a deep well, and you know about movies that sure. you know come out of books. You, you, you know, it's only so much you can take, right? And yeah. so there's still so much story that is within the book that you know we explore further in in this version. It's also a musical, and you know, you know, I come from music, you know, but but I, but my love and respect for black music, not just certainly in the Americas, but globally and how sure. they evolved, man. Like from the continent to Jamaica, to like, you know, the States to back to the continent, like that's yeah. the circle for me. But getting an opportunity to explore African-American music, specifically from gospel to blues to jazz, it's like, and I birthed everything else as we know it. There is no popular music in the world without that music and that struggle. And I have, in a way, you can align Seeley's story with the evolution of African-American music. It's the, you know, it's, 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 it's looked at as degraded, but the world can live without it. You know what I mean? And that's what happens with Seeley. But I will say the one thing, when people ask me what's different, the one thing I will say is that in our version, Seeley has an imagination. And you, you, know, you know how I love, how much I love to play with that world. Why? Right. Because, bro, and sis, <laughs> there are no, there are no, nobody deals with trauma without ex having a fertile mind, without yeah. exploring a fertile mind. Because yeah. again, that's why black folk, no matter where you find us in Brazil, on the continent, the mind and the creative energy is so fertile based on the suppression that we faced over time. Yeah. And <clears throat> Celie, has dealt with all of this suppression. And so her mind becomes a fertile place for us to go to. Amazing. Every time, every time that she's dealing with something, we can go there. So, so she's not just caught in, you know, because the other thing is this, when you put an abuser and, a, and someone who's abused on the same platform, you've already given the abuser power, right? Because there is no such thing as an equal footing with the abused and the, and, and the abuser. Um, and, and, and personally, the way I view it ultimately is that giving Seely an imagination ultimately allowed her to elevate past her abuser because we were in her world 
And so we mm-hmm. were navigating with her how she's dealing with her abuse. Yeah. And I think that's a huge difference. I mean, and people will, I really believe people will connect to this version based solely on the focal point. You know what I mean? It goes really deep and her mind is beautiful and she grows and she tries to figure out how to navigate Mr., how to navigate Shug, how to navigate, you know, Sophia, Harpo. It's a, it's a fantastic, Fantastic, you know, new as I, as, at least as I see it, it's an, an incredible reimagining that I really hope mm-hmm. people come in open minded and be ready to be blown away because visually it's also just some of the most incredible. I mean, again, you guys are familiar with what I do, but I also got this phenomenal DP, uh, um, Dan Lawson, who did Shape of Water, did recently. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, bro, when yes. I see we go there. Yeah. We, it is it is some of the most beautiful we I've seen us. Now, besides that, you ask who's in it. I mean, Coleman Domingo. Oh, I wow. mean the man. Fa- you know, Fantasia, mm-hmm. Taraji P. Henson, um, Daniel Brooks, her. Oh my god, her acting debut. Oh, I didn't know oh. that. Oh, yes, I did. Who is she uh-huh. in the movie? She's squeak. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I love her. I love the music. Holly Bailey. Uh-huh. People, people are going to be amazed at her brilliance. I mean, yo, it was a love fest, yo. Like, I, it, it was just beautiful to be around these incredibly talented people who heads know, but the world doesn't. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, like we know Coleman is one of the best. We He's know great. One He's of the best. great. Like incredibly great. And it, but, yeah. but but again, you need the work. You need dexterous yeah. work. I mean, you know, the reason people believe Daniel Day Lewis, for instance, one of the best is because he got the work. Over oh, yeah. It's written. It's written. I mean, there will be blood. It's some of the most dexterous writing. Yeah. So you he gonna be great. Yeah. Like yeah. that's what I feel like we all my cast are going to have an amazing arrival because the material is dexterous. It's beautiful. And their performances match it. And you, I mean, you will be amazed to watch some people that you went, I didn't know her could do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know Ali could do it. I didn't know Fantasia could do that. I mean, mm-hmm. it was like that for me every day on set, just going, yo, I'm lucky, bro. I'm lucky. You know? So anyway. I'm, I'm very yeah. curious when, because I, I, they pan picked you for this. Yes. Oprah, Steven Spielberg, Quincy yes. Jones, you were yes. the man. They wanted you. Was this always the idea or were you like, this is what I want to bring to this this musical and making it into something, a reimagination, as you said. And then, I mean, too, I just want to know if like some of the same songs are going to be in in um in this sister, God's trying to tell you something. I know we're gonna get new music, but it's one of the other ones. It. I mean, we we, okay. we honored we we honored the music that you know some of the music that people know. But you know, in terms of you know, I know I was adamant about making this mine. You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and I, I I always talk about this quote um, as a Toni Morrison quote. She says, "I stood on the border, stood on the edge, claimed that central force the world to move over to where I was." And that has been my mantra for years. It's like, you can't lose on the edge you pick. You can't lose. And and going into this film, you know, there were expectations that it'll mirror the original. There were expectations. And I was very adamant about saying, no, if it's done already, we don't have to do it. You know, remember there are audiences who have never seen this film. Like we can't only say assumed that everybody oh of course have seen it right for people so for some people this is going to be their color purple that's their color purple and so yeah. you have to factor them in you have to factor the you know you know the heads who know it already you have to also honor the ones who've seen the stage play you have to honor the ones who have only read the book it's like there are multiple ways in and but i was very adamant that this is going to be mine it was going to be Ours, let's put it that way. It was going to mirror how we think. It, it was going to mirror how we see the world. Because again, remember, it was 1985 when they made this film. I mean, the concept of blackness. I mean, let's even talk about the Africanness of the original versus this one. You know, I'm able to go, you know, it ain't going to be a mix of Africa. No, it's, we're going to pick one Africa. We're going to deal with that Africa. We're going to use their tribe, their costumes, their language, and we're going to make it authentic. And you know, that's something that didn't, you know, for most people, didn't matter in the 80s. It was just 
It was Africa. But we've grown out of certain things that I feel like, you know, so the queer story, that's very central to this. I mean, we can go at it in a way that's more honest and truthful than say back then when there was stigma and taboo. So all that to say, man, we were very blessed and lucky. And, and I did work with the best. Indeed. I know Fatima Robinson, I have to shout out. Oh, shout my out. God. Come Fatima, on. Fatima, let me, let me just say this. Legit. When I was in high school, Elias, are you that somebody? And this high school in Ghana, right? This is not like <laughs> America high school. This high school in Ghana. Elias, are you that somebody was out. Every young girl in my grade, you know, back then, you know, we had YouTube. So it was cassette tape. You got to put it in. You got to rewind, learn the move. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and when I met Fatima, the first thing I told her, I said, yo, your influence. You know, because of course they're trying to tell me you know, she's never done a major motion picture. She's I said, yo, culture. Yeah. She yeah. is the culture. I love that. Come on. These people, these people don't even be knowing. They don't know how much they've done. No, but Tima no. don't know. I mean, it's like, well, that's why we have to give people their flowers. Because she doesn't right. know. Yeah, she, You know what I mean? Yeah. They, and, I, and I told her, I told her, I said, yo, you're influenced globally. I mean, there were people who were trying to be you, learning every every move that you had thought about. And I have to say, yo, one of the beautiful, most beautiful things on this on this show was being at rehearsals, yo, and watching these geniuses, these Black geniuses come up with like magic on the spot. And I'm just like, yo, I'm, I couldn't be luckier. I couldn't be mm. luckier, indeed. Last question for me, Blitz. I'm gonna ask you to do something right now that uh -oh. You're not gonna be able. You're not gonna be able to do. Uh oh. Because <laughs> I know you. I know how you are. You're erratic. You're passionate. <laughs> passionate. Mm -hmm. Um, it's time to talk about Jolof. No. Yeah. No. We, yeah, no, we have no. to. No, no. <laughs> we, see, we, have, we, no. we have to talk about. Don't you know we, what his like, answer is gonna be like, already? We, we, but look. <laughs> no. But look. Who well, we have? We we have we. We have to do it because There's I need an job. answer. That's See? One. There's See? nothing to discuss. I know you're, wait. About, to, you're about to, it's a non, it's a non question. I'm going to tell you straight up. I can get Wale on the phone right now. The homie Wale, shout out Wale. He going to tell you something different. I can no. get my other homie. I got, I got some homies from Sierra Leone that'll whoa, tell whoa, you whoa, whoa, that whoa. their Joe Love is the, the best. So Sierra Leone is not even in the conversation for Joe when you, when you When you said I'm erratic, I'm passionate, I thought you were about to ask not, you you have completely exposed me for who I am. I'm very <laughs> passionate. <laughs> what? Who does it best? Because La Liberia, Liberia also jumps into the uh, situation. Liberia, people? I hear, who I hear Liberia, I hear about? Liberia, I hear Sierra Leone, I hear Gambia. I, 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 I hear all of these. Who Senegal, does it the who best? Senegal, who does it so the best? It's, who does it's the best? Between Ghana and Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you how I vet it. Because I don't do the I ate it in America shit. Because listen, <laughs> you know what happens when people travel, they, they forget who they are. So I forgave That's true. them. I forgave uh. them. I had some here and I was like, <laughs> I was like, bruh, you guys are not, this is not it. So I took my ass to Lagos, yo. Legit. I went to Lagos. Oh, an away game. Away. I went all the way, guys. I went there. And I was like, all right, guys, you're gonna have to show me. This is Jell off you speak of. Okay, show me. It was embarrassing, yeah. It was embarrassing. <laughs> listen, I love my Nigerians. They're the greatest of all time. There, there are no. Listen, if I could, if I could switch, I'll be a Nigerian, bro. Because that, because they are some of the most brilliant Africans, tenacious mm -hmm, Africans. Yeah. They lead. You know, that's mm -hmm. just who they are. I love Nigeria, but the Jalof game, bro. They are not winning. And mm. listen, when I see y'all in Accra. Okay, we're just gonna go with Jollof hunting, y'all. Like literally, you guys will have so much Jollof, Van. You're gonna come back, and this conversation will be null and void. Okay, now look. Before we go, I do have to show you something. Donnie's got it queued up right now because okay. you guys are all arguing. I've actually found in my YouTube food searches who actually makes the best the the the, the best rice. I, I'm telling you right now, I found it, Donnie. Whenever you're ready. Just go ahead and let and share Donnie. the screen and show. So yeah. So wait a second. <laughs> right. This is the guy. Who, who man is that? This is the dude. This is the man. This is the man. 
What is this European subtly addictive? Seasoned- look, look, look. He's saying, Stop. don't eat the Doritos. Sp- yeah. He loves it. This oh. guy <laughs> is the Bro. dude. That's the Joel of King. I can't Get it off our now. screen. Right Get it off our screen. I can't see this now. I can't see <laughs> this. This is ruined. I, this was a fantastic conversation. I was really <laughs> excited. Man, I am so disappointed. I can't believe Jonathan. I have witnessed it. They colonized it. They colonized yeah. it. Listen, before Must he- they have everything? Must they have <laughs> including yes. the jaw? Yes. Last thing I want to say, your new book, we got to give you a chance to talk about sure. it. The Scent yes. of Burning oh, Flowers. Yes, yes. Because you seem to do it all. I read you paint too. You music, oh, movies. Literally, it's like, literally, there's I, I'm nothing you, you cannot do. I, one, of the, one of the best things that's ever happened to me in my relationship with Nick May, Ava DuVernay, and the people over at RA was them turning me on to this guy who is an absolutely brilliant creative. I'm going to stop talking. Just a brilliant creative. Yeah, Amazing. Um, thank you, thank you. First of all, man, um, um, the scent of burnt flowers. Yes, it, it is. I needed to write this story. I needed to do it because I, you know, I'd explored it in other avenues, different mediums, but it just needed so much backstory. And the literary medium is really the only one that you can actually create layer upon layer upon layer. Um, of like cyclical storytelling. You can't do that in cinema. Like people are gonna walk out the theater, mm. you know? And so and so books just give you this rich, deep ability, you know, and, and shout out to you, Van, on your book, man. Thank uh, you. Uh, you know, it's like, you know, this, the feeling of like having- Rachel, Rachel as well, she dropped a book earlier this oh, year. beautiful, congrats, uh-huh. congrats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, 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 I will be on it now. Uh-huh. But, um, <laughs> but, but the, I mean, you, so, so you guys know this feeling where you go, man, I can time jump and time skip yep. in ways that you just couldn't do. You can do it in music, couldn't do it in, in fine art. You couldn't do it in any other medium. You can be talking about your life right now. You can, something could trigger you to go 20 years back and the audience is right with you. Yep. So anyway, this story, this, this, this book is about an African-American couple who an incident in the South triggers them to have to flee America. Um, they end up going to Ghana because, and this happened in the 1960s, because the first president of Ghana went to college with our protagonist, one, one of our protagonists that we're following. And the problem when they arrive is they right, right when there's a coup d'etat, and the country is in free fall because they've oh wow they've overthrown the president. Mm-hmm. So so now the question is, you know, where is home for these guys? You know, and they end up with this musician who now has to try to harbor them. And it's a crazy, you know, they're pursued by an FBI agent. It's one of those stories that for me, I've always thought about how the larger, because you'll find out the hands of the West and how they they kind of have these coups, but they are not there, but they like influence it all. And they choose who's going to be the next leader. And then at the time, remember, this is right at the birth of the Cold War. So you got Russia on this side playing their games. And you've got America, England and the rest of the West on this side playing a game. And a lot of the victims ended up being a lot of the global South. Sure. So like, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, the continent just fell apart based on who you aligned with, you know. And I've always wanted to tell the story of our first president because he was a cat who came very much like me, came from Ghana, went to college, went to HBCU, he went to Lincoln University and, mm-hmm. and, you know, and, and, and pledged um, Stigma, I believe. Uh, Wait, uh, and, the first First president of Ghana. Kwame. Was it Sigma? The Sigma, bro. <laughs> the Sigma's burying the lead on that one. I haven't heard about that, Sigma's. Shout out to the Sigma's. It's, it was, it's Shout amazing. out to the... It's amazing. Yeah. And, and so the book, the book kind of follows his <laughs> journey when he comes to Lincoln University, how he gets radicalized, how he goes back home. And, and like out of Ghana's independence came every... Ghana was first. Ghana was first. And the beauty of Ghana, too, is it was born as a Pan-Africanist country. W.E.B. Du Bois is buried there because he came down to help us, you know, mm. organize our, our, our newly uh, born country. Um, lots of, and that's why African-Americans <laughs> generally go. And that's why I was, Ghanaians generally are open and warm because that's part of our history. Like we understand the diaspora. We understand our part. You know, we don't always live up to it, but we do, we try to go, yeah. yo, we're home, dog. Like you can come home when you're tired. And so anyway, the book really just, explores that relationship it's it's fast paced it was something that i really believe needed to exist and i did it 
It's amazing. Blitz, I smell something. <laughs> I smell movie adaption. I smell six Academy Awards. Oh, shit. That's a lot. That's Whoa. a lot. Brother. The, book, I, the book's been picked up for a miniseries it, already. It, is, it has been picked up. It, it is actually was picked up before it came out. It's, it's FX. Man, get, it's okay, FX. That's, that's not. All right. No, no more for Blitz. <laughs> No more for Bliss. I'm, I'm dreaming Bliss is doing. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming Bliss is doing. Bliss. Bliss is reset status. Yeah, the book. Hey, man. I'm just saying. You know, you ever been in a pitch meeting? Bliss, Bliss is in the pitch meeting. He goes, I'm thinking of writing a book. Sold. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey, listen, it's the Joel off guys. Do not eat Nigerian Joel off. That's all I'm going to say. Say hello. Thank, yeah. thank you all. My man, thank look, all. we are so happy. I'm so happy for you. Um, when, like, when we first met, you were a uh, an up-and-comer. You're there. It's happening, bro. You're doing your thing, man. Very proud. Happy to Thanks. happy to see you. We're and, and, happy and, to know and, you. I'm, and I'm proud of y'all, man. I, I love this podcast, guys. I'm on it. This was an I it was beautiful. Thank you all for having me. Thank you oh, so much, man. Of course. Thank we you will, for being here. We're gonna talk to you again the night the movie comes out. The three of us are gonna throw back some drinks. Oh, we're gonna talk when to is you it? Again. When is it, it, it coming it out? Com it comes out December twenty third. Okay. Uh, no, December twenty twenty three. Yeah, December 2023. Okay. So, yeah. like, when it comes out, we better be invited to the premiere. Okay. Uh, we'll come and we'll, we'll have some drinks. All right, man. Beautiful, Appreciate man. you, brother. Thank you all so very much. Bye. God bless. Thanks for joining us on Highlight. Same to you. All right.